Hi, my name is Kelly McCarley. I'm one of the lactation consultants here in the birth center at the Von Voigtlander Women's Hospital. Today I'm going to take you through a review of the neonatal hypoglycemia guideline, which includes the use of oral glucose gel as the first line of treatment for neonatal hypoglycemia. This is a copy of our revised algorithm, which you'll find in the new guideline. You can access the new guideline from the Von Voigtlander website under the butterfly logo from your desktop. And then the uh, flowchart is part of that guideline, so you can find that there. We'll also have this laminated and posted in every med station and every nurse's station for quick reference. Today we'll just take a walk through. The uh, flowchart is color-coded, so you can see the red is kind of your alert area where you need to do something quickly. Your yellow is your hazard or your caution area where you're trying to figure out what your next step will be. And your green areas are where your, your baby is in good condition and ready to move on. So we'll walk through each step. This uh, guideline, by the way, is only relevant to infants uh, during their first two days of life. These are well newborns here in the birth center. So this is not a guideline that pertains to any baby admitted to MOT or NICU. For the symptomatic infant, if at any point in your care the infant becomes symptomatic in any way, you should draw a POC glucose. And if that glucose value comes up less than 45, you'll continue with these steps here. And those steps include you're going to draw a stat serum, send your stat serum, You'll notify your first contact and also your advanced practice provider in the nest and then you will administer the first dose of uh, glucose gel which I'll show you how to do that at the end of the uh, talk here. So for these symptomatic infants that's what you'll do and you'll wait for the provider to decide why is this baby symptomatic and what's the next step. So these are your asymptomatic infants. If they're at risk for hypoglycemia they would be LGA, large for gestational age, SGA, small for gestational age, less than 37 weeks or born to a diabetic mother. And during the first two hours of life, you wanna encourage a lot of skin to skin. You're gonna to try to attempt your first feeding within the first hour of life, but no later than 90 minutes because you wanna check that first POC glucose a half an hour after the first feeding. So you want that first POC glucose check to be done by two hours of life. Based on that POC glucose screen, you'll proceed here as indicated. So if you've taken the POC glucose screen and it comes up less than 25, that's, that's a concerning glucose value. We're gonna treat those infants as symptomatic infants. So all the steps here mimic exactly what you did for the symptomatic infant here. You're going to draw and send a stat serum. You'll notify your first contact and your advanced practice provider in the nest. You'll administer a dose of glucose gel and then you'll wait for the provider to determine the plan of care. That's for a glucose value less than 25. If the glucose value comes up equal to or greater than 45, that baby's in good shape, you're gonna continue with just your regularly scheduled glucose screens, which is recommended to be done every two to three hours. So you can schedule that into your workflow for the day. Keep in mind that uh, an AC or a before feeding glucose check is gonna be your most accurate. So as best as you can, try to get all of your glucose checks done as pre-feeds, but if you arrive to a room and the baby's already eating or has already eaten recently, you can still just take your check based on your schedule of Q3 to two to three hours. This is where some of the babies will come up where we're gonna talk about treating with glucose gel. So if your glucose value comes up anywhere from 25 to 44, you're gonna administer a dose of glucose gel and then you will attempt a feeding. Attempt a feeding means for the formula fed baby, you're going to give formula just as you would normally with a bottle. And for the breastfeeding baby, you're going to attempt a latch. So you'll spend about five to 10 minutes attempting a latch at the breast. If the baby cannot latch, You'll instruct the mom on hand expression or using a, a, an electric pump. Have her try to express some colostrum. She should pump for about 15 minutes. If you get any expressed colostrum, you use that as your feeding. But if the baby cannot latch and cannot, the mom cannot get any colostrum expressed, you just, you've treated the baby already with gel, which you do not want to feed this baby formula. This is a breastfed baby. There's no indication to give formula based on hypoglycemia alone. If again, your value comes up a second time, in the range of 25 to 44, you're going to administer a second dose of glucose gel as your treatment, and you're going to attempt a feeding again. After this, you'll recheck the glucose in one more hour. So at this point, the infants receive two treatments of glucose gel. This glucose gel is administered as a buckle, massage into the mucosa, so it should be just as effective as IV glucose. So after two treatments of essentially IV glucose treatment, the baby should be correcting their glucose values. So if you've done two treatments, you're going to recheck in an hour, now you have two choices. Either your infant is in good shape with a value equal to or greater than 45, or the infant is less than 45. If the value is still less than 45, 
You're going to send a stat serum. You will not administer gel because you've already given two doses and we're limited to two consecutive doses of gel. You'll notify uh, the, the advanced care provider and the first contact and then this baby is going to be transferred to the nest. So again, no more gel. This baby's been attempted with treatment twice at the bedside. It's not effective, so that baby's gonna to go to the nest for further treatment. Um, as far as exit criteria, for your term infants, you're gonna monitor these babies for 12 hours. For your preterm or SGA infants, you're gonna monitor them for 24 hours. And then you do need to have three consecutive glucose checks of greater than or equal to 45, and one of those has to be a before feed reading. So that's the guideline. Um, again, it's available to you in the uh, Von Boylander guidelines under newborn care if you need to find that, and we'll have it available to you in all of the med stations and nurses stations as well. So next I'm gonna go through a demonstration of how to administer glucose gel. So you wanna always use a heel warmer on the baby's heel to warm the heel. You'll wipe with alcohol. You always want to use a pediatric lancet and not the other adult lancets that are available. The reason being this will only penetrate one millimeter deep. These penetrate 1.3 to up to 2.3 millimeters deep, which is too deep for a baby's foot. So always use the pediatric lancet, and then you'll wipe the first drop of blood away before you take your value. So assuming this baby has a POC glucose value of less than 45, we're going to treat this baby with oral glucose gel. This is what the gel looks like. This is stocked in every Omni cell. You'll be able to access this as a med order under the baby's name. So if you have a baby who qualifies for hypoglycemia screening, you're going to activate that order set in my chart. You'll be able to pull the glucose gel from the OmniCell under the baby's name. When it comes out, it comes with a label that you'll put the date and time that you open it. These oral caps, there's not a replaceable cap, so you can use the oral cap to close it after you've opened it. Put your date and time that you open it here. It will expire six hours after opening. So if you're the next nurse coming on and you see that it's been open for six hours, you have to discard this and get a new tube. When you're ready to administer your gel, it is weight-based dosing. This will be in your MyChart order as a reference, but you go by the infant's birth weight and then you find out over here how much gel is indicated. So for example, if this baby weighs less than two kilograms, we're going to dose one ml of glucose gel. So to draw that up, you open the tube of gel, you put a large amount in a medicine cup, more than you'll probably need. You use an oral syringe to draw up your one ml dose. So there's your one ml glucose gel. Now to administer it, you'll wash your hands, put on clean gloves. Before administering, you do have to get a sterile gauze pad and go into the baby's mouth and dry each side of the mucosa with your sterile gauze. It will absorb better if the baby's cheek is dry. So go in and dry each side of the oral mucosa. And then with your gel, this is one millimeter of gel. This is not an oral feeding. We're not feeding the gel to the baby. We're massaging this into the oral muc buccal mucosa. So you put partial dose of the gel on your finger. You go into the baby's mouth and you massage it into the cheek. You do some more of the gel, you massage it in on the other side of the cheek, and you just keep going back and forth, back and forth until the full dose has been administered. This is not an oral feeding. We're not feeding this baby gel. We're applying it to the buccal mucosa there. So once you've administered your gel, you'll recheck your glucose in one hour. If the value is less than 25, you'll send your stat serum and notify your provider. If your value is greater than 45, you're gonna just proceed with your scheduled checks if it's still in the yellow zone, we're going to do one more administration before we decide what we're going to do next. Um, at any time, this is going to be live February 11th, 2019. After that, anyone who has any questions, the lactation consultants are here to serve as a resource for you, and we're happy to answer any questions anytime.